What would you rather have? A pilot with awful customer service skills but is great at flying the aircraft? Or one who has fantastic customer service skills but skipped some of their simulator training? In this completely imaginary scenario, we imagine most of you would choose the first pilot, since good customer service isn't the critical life and death skill in the way that flying the aircraft is. But thankfully, those two skills aren't mutually exclusive. Ideally, pilots should be good at flying and have some ability to interact with passengers. Yes, a pilot's job might not always be considered a customer-facing role, but it is in many ways. Pilots interact with passengers constantly, especially pilots who work for corporate aviation companies who fly smaller planes and have more hands-on time with their customers. And so, today's video will examine the importance of service skills for pilots and discuss how meaningful this is to the airlines they work for. Most of the information in this video comes from an article written by Simple Flying contributor and commercial airline pilot Jack Hurstam. Flying for an undisclosed major US airline, Jack operates commercial flights regularly and flies charter services from time to time, and so we trust he knows what he's talking about. Every pilot hears about the importance of their customer-facing image during their basic indoctrination after starting at a new airline. Whether a regional carrier, charter operation, on-demand service or mainline airline, almost every airline dedicates some time to identifying to pilots the importance of positively influencing passengers while in uniform. Interestingly, airlines have identified that one of the strongest identifiers of their brand is a uniformed pilot. Airlines, particularly those who use advanced metrics to measure their passengers' experiences, have deciphered this information and communicated it to pilots. From a customer relations standpoint, the aim is that airlines want their pilots to represent the company well at work by being cordial, answering questions in the terminal, wearing the uniform properly, and so on. These points are admittedly quite apparent to most pilots. Another key point some airlines make regarding customer service is being open and inviting to passengers who want to visit the flight deck prior to takeoff. A visit is always only on a time-permitting basis, but most flights during normal operations have plenty of spare time between the pilots completing their pre-flight duties and pushback. Almost every pilot openly accommodates passenger visits from kids and adults alike, allowing passengers to look at the flight deck before or after the flight has been identified as one of the strongest determinants of whether customers review flights favorably. Another point regarding customer satisfaction is announcements. There's a sweet spot to hit regarding the amount of public announcements made and their length, but this topic is subjective. At a bare minimum, airlines mandate that pilots make a welcome aboard service announcement and a top-of-descent or arrival announcement that includes flight time and weather information. Airlines also require an announcement for seatbelts, which is an outcropping of legal requirements. Pilots have the liberty to include any pertinent information or sentiments that they would like outside of these mandatory announcements. Pilots, captains specifically, have a heightened obligation during irregular or delayed operations. Airlines generally require announcements every 15 minutes to update passengers on the situation as it unfolds. Have you ever been seated on an aircraft that hasn't taken off for an extended period of time and wondered what was going on? As many of you would agree, it's not necessarily the delay that is irritating, but it's the lack of information and communication from the airline. And so, even when the problem doesn't change whatsoever, pilots are still encouraged to communicate this to passengers during delays. Surveys have shown that many passengers desire more information during delays and are understandably frustrated when information isn't passed along. For this reason, most operation manuals that pilots abide by require these 15-minute updates during delays. Pilots who work for corporate airlines are arguably responsible for more passenger interfacing compared to their airline counterparts. Not only do these pilots work closer to clients simply due to the smaller aircraft they fly, but the customers generally have higher expectations because of the prices they pay for the service. While lots of corporate companies have flight attendants, there are also plenty that do not staff the cabin with an attendant. When this is the case, it's up to the pilot, or pilots, to take care of the passengers to the best of their ability. 
For example, in the United States, on-demand and Part 135 air carriers, under US law, fly eight-seat Pilatus PC-12s and Beechcraft King Airs. These planes are too small to carry a cabin attendant efficiently, and the flights are usually too short to require their presence. Also, flight attendants are not legally required to be on board, as with airlines and other Part 121 carriers. Without flight attendants, the pilots are responsible for closing the doors, conducting the passenger safety briefing, which is always required, and perhaps even loading bags or helping with the fueling. These pilots' proximity and heightened visibility to the passengers make customer service all the more important in these operations. Another point about pilots and customer relations is regarding the overall perception of the piloting community. Unless passengers are somewhat familiar with the airline industry or are frequent flyers, most are unable to differentiate one airline's pilots from another. The uniform tend to look about the same to the general public. The result is that a passenger's interaction with any pilot in the terminal reflects all pilots. Most pilots view their professional community as intrinsically linked and look out for each other's interests, and so this makes it all the more important to be courteous and experienced while in uniform. And then, as a final note, passengers will occasionally ask a pilot questions about an airport and airport terminal that the pilot is unfamiliar with. For example, a United Airlines pilot might not know the layout of the Atlanta airport nearly as well as Houston, nor would a Delta Airlines pilot know the layout of Denver as well as they might Salt Lake City. Unfortunately, most passengers tend to see pilots as aficionados of whatever airport they're in. But sometimes pilots simply don't know where they are any better than the person asking the question. Of course, this statement mainly applies to interactions inside the airport terminal. And so, these interactions can be rather funny, but both parties can usually figure out whatever the question is with a bit of brain power. So, if you're travelling through an airport and need help, don't always assume that pilots making their own way through the terminal will have the answers that you seek. But, even if they don't know, one would always hope the interaction is pleasant and respectful. And so, though not an overtly customer-facing job, it certainly behooves pilots and their employers when they are personable and put their best foot forward. Airlines give pilots guidelines to follow, but still leave plenty of room for personal communication styles. Thinking about your own travel experiences, what are your best and worst experiences when interacting with pilots? We'd love to hear them, so do share them with us by leaving a comment down below. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.